Without having seen any marked floor plans, without ever having seen the original drawings, it was abundantly clear that Helen knew things about a building long ago altered from its shape in the 1830s, that she knew where an old staircase had once curved, where ancient walls had once stood. It was clear that she wasn't guessing, that she knew. From this upper landing here, in the main centre here of the building, yes. was it possible to look down into that main assembly hall? Yes, I, I, it is. Uh, it was, definitely. Right, and that yeah. is a lecture theatre to the left? That is lecture theatre, indeed. Right, yes. fine. Great. That's right. I wonder if you could uh, tell me if you were uh, at a tutorial and a discussion in the museum or the library and you wanted to wash your hands, Yes. Where would you go? Is there a ladies' room? Uh, um, men's room, please. Uh, men's room, yes, that's right. From the second floor level here, yes. uh, you'd go along a small corridor and it was on the right, this, this side. Now, would it possibly, let's have a look at this. Here we are. From the main entrance, right, the museum, and on the right, up some steps to the right and off the center's room. There yes. it is. Yeah. There's a closet there. Right. Yes, there is. Are you satisfied that she knows more about this building than a person uh, is likely to know who's never seen the building? It would seem more than coincidental, quite frankly. It may be inexplicable to, in my terms, you know, but uh, certainly uh, from what she's uh, discussed with me before she saw these plans, or even knew these plans existed. Your paper on this, David, was never published. There's no way anybody could walk into a library and pick up a copy. No, the only place there will be a copy of my work is in the Open University Archives. And uh, I don't think that Helen has been anywhere near the Open University Archives. She needs long arms. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Especially never having been out of Australia. So, a second experiment, and a woman from today's Australia, in Scotland for the first time, confronting the one man alive who could confirm with the evidence the things she claimed to have seen in an earlier life. Like all our subjects, Helen Pickering had no conscious knowledge of that past. It was only under hypnosis that she and they became aware of those traces and reminders of what had gone before. Of going deeper and deeper. Jenny Green is an eminently sensible and stable woman, a housewife and mother living in the quiet suburbia of Sydney, Australia. There was no reason for us or her to suspect what was going to happen when she was in trance before our camera. And what did happen surprised and disturbed us all. Fräulein, Fräulein, he's fousy to father. I don't want to go. I don't want to go! Suddenly she had taken us back only a short time, only 40 years, and to Nazi Germany, to a time when, as a teenage girl, the terror had struck her family. Can you remember very, very clearly where you were born? Across that, in the flat of father's shop. What town is that in? What city? In Dusseldorf. And what's your, what was your name in that life? Dorothy Hellman. And what was your father's name in that life? Joseph Hellman. And your mother's name? Once Jenny had led us onto this new and unexpected track, we had to follow. We brought in a German interpreter, and our first attempt to talk to Jenny in German led her to break out of her trance at once in a mixture of fear and anger. The Hallmann family of Dusseldorf had been Jewish. I'm going to get the girl to talk to you again. And I'd like you to either answer or tell me that you can hear Wie heißt du? Kannst du Deutsch verstehen? Filter Bronto. 
Hast es du gesagt? Der Haut rast da. Wo kommen die Hörste denn? Und da weißt du nein. Nur ist der Krieg noch mal da. Wo ist denn The language meant nothing to our German interpreter, or to us, or to the university linguistics experts who heard it. But it seemed to carry the sound of danger, and there'd been enough of that in the other life in Jenny's mind. They were taking us to a village for Jews to live in. What was the village? Often. This would be cooked. What was that? We cooked and cleaned. He washed clothes. They were the clothes of people who had been and gone. He told us they'd taken them somewhere else. But they wouldn't leave their clothes. My friend, Frida. She just asked why the clothes kept coming. They beat her. They made a sore watch while they beat her and kicked. And we were to ask questions. We were just awoke. Wouldn't let us help her. She just died. She just died in the dirt and it wouldn't let us help her. You're coming away from that. You're coming away from that. The depth of Jenny's emotion was all too apparent. In what she was saying, there was all the horror of the Holocaust, and we were all affected by it. It took a little while for Peter Ramster to quieten her again, to be sure she was deep in trance. And then we looked for a way back into some less harrowing part of that past life. Jenny had said she had lived in Dusseldorf, 